to the chaotic life of a Canadian mom. Welcome back to any of my subscribers and a great big hello to any new subscribers. If you've seen our previous videos, we did videos on how we grind and mix our meat, which was a combination of a pork butt, shoulder, shoulder, pork shoulder, and uh, venison that we got this year. And we did some honey garlic pepperettes, and now we are going to do some hot dogs, some wieners similar to what you would get or know if you're Canadian, like a gainer's wiener. If you're old. If you're old, I guess. I just Gainers aged. Gainer's gone, been, been gone since like the 80s. So I've aged us, but that's okay. So I guess the same disclaimer as our other videos, we are not professionals by any means, but these we're, are- We're amped enthusiasts. We are very enthusiastic, yeah. and uh, we've learned through trial and error, and maybe we'll save some people some error some of the techniques don't work so well, but uh, we haven't had too many failures. And we're figuring it out too. So uh, hopefully you enjoy this. So in here we have the meat that we've ground. Run through a coarse grind and then a fine grind plate. It's a mix of, like you said, pork shoulder and venison. And it's pretty darn close to a 50-50 mix. Of yeah, it was, it was close. So, uh, now I guess we get ready to start the mixture for... Yeah, we end up with a 6.6 .6 kilogram batch, so we're just dividing it by three. We're gonna... We did the pepperettes, pepperonis, uh, we're gonna do the wieners, and then we're probably gonna do some breakfast sausage or something, so... Yeah. Right now, 2.2 .2 kilograms of... Meat. Meat. And this meat has been chilling. We're getting probably about one degree Celsius, so 33 degrees. Fahrenheit, and that's cold. Perfect for this though. Yeah. Of course you don't want it rock hard, but definitely the colder the no, better. The colder the better. It keeps the mat, uh, the, the, the mat, the meat and the fat from separating out from each other. And uh, then you don't end up with something that's just greasy. Fat is your friend, but as long as you're friendly with it. Yeah, if it's worked too much or it's too hot, like Bart had maybe said in another video, but the the fat will almost coat the meat then rather than uh, bind or... Rather than being part of it, it's yeah. just, it coats it and it's covered. It. And then you end up with just a big greasy mess. Yeah, So not nice. All right, I'm going to do this part. Okay. So we bought pre-mixed this time. There are lots of times Bart and I in the past have done our own seasoning mix because we buy cure on its own. And as mentioned before, the cure is the important part. It's the stuff that's gonna keep you safe from the botulism and everything. So in this case, we are using, it'd be 81 times two grams of seasoning. 2.2. 2.2, correct. 3 grams times 2.2 of the cure, 160 grams times 2.2 of the water ice per kilogram. And being we have the 2.2, that's... Yep. So what is 81... You get your phone out, calculate. I can do some of this. Okay. So 81 times 2.2 is 178.2. Okay. Mm, this smells good too. What did I say? 178. Whoops. That's it. Whatever you'd like. Three grams. There. Perfect. That's the seasoning. This is the cure. And the cure would be, what did I say? Three times 2.2 is 6.6 .6 grams. Right 
No, go for it. No, sorry. And this, as mentioned, is the uh, the important. I got eight. Okay. okay, and then we need our water, which would be two points, 160 grams, times 2.2 2 is 352. Three hundred fifty two grams is also three hundred fifty two milliliters. You marry an engineer, they know stuff like this. Who's an engineer? Well, an oil field person. <laughs> okay, just like the previous videos, we will lock and load here. I think I'm gonna use the dust shield this time. Last time. It was the plume of seasoning. It smelt fantastic, but. <laughs> so we just get mixing, everything's locked down. We'll just get mixing at a slow rate. Then we'll just add in the, the stuff. So we're just trying to extract the proteins here, mix everything in. Right now it's mixing, of course. But get all this in and then we will Gently, or not gently, slowly, put it here in just so it's mixed over as much of the area as we, can, as we possibly can. Got a log jam. That's right, we don't need that. Oh, can't we, no, that we don't need that. Oh. And then we'll get the water in. This one's climbing more than the other. Yeah, it's probably a little colder. <laughs> okay, we got the water in a little sooner too. Now this one compared to if you if you guys did watch the Roni video, we, we stopped just when it was sticky. This one we actually want blended a little bit more, so it's more almost more like a like a hot dog. Well yeah, like a hot dog mixture like that uh, you can't tell the difference from one piece of it to the next. And also the difference between the pepperettes and the hot dogs is we use this cellulose. Yep. Cellulose casing. So this is this is not the stuff that you can eat. So what'll happen is we'll stuff them smoke. No, not smoke. We'll not actually uh, sous vide these. Sous vide so that they are cooked. And then you take the casing off. Whereas all the others have an edible casing. If I plan this right, he'll finally clear my kitchen and I'll get a new one for Christmas. No. <laughs> It's almost, I don't know, I guess the best description I can think of right now, like a pate type consistency. That's right. We're just going to lift up and we will check it out. I'm sure all the protein extraction is good enough. It's just more, as long as everything has been mixed in here. I don't want to end up having a part in the bottom that Hasn't seen the spoon yet, but it does look pretty good. So we will. Take that off. And we can probably come back in a minute once we get our stuffer set up. You can see the stickiness, it's not coming off. So this is it's more than good. Protein extraction complete. Yeah. So we've got our sausage stuffer filled with meat, uh, as we learned in the last time we used this, not to overfill it. 
And it's important when you're stuffing this not to have a whole bunch of air pockets. Right. So try to make sure that it's very compact and it's pretty straightforward from there. I yeah, these are, yeah, yeah. Do you look like Gator's hot dogs with the white strip oh, yeah, on sure. <laughs> I've discovered through this process that we will find some wood to screw this down to because Yeah. Jamie and both her arms good here a little bit more in business. Suffering from frozen shoulder on one arm, this one, and so it's a little hard to get the right angle for about halfway through the canister. This one's harder going than the last one. That's Might be a little stickier. Might be a little stickier being it's uh, been worked quite a bit more. I'm guessing maybe. The last one was a breeze compared to. It was still a lot easier than using the, Ooh, the we, squirt gun. We used to have a gun and you would just get I on. I should bring that out and show them how. On the go for uh, filling the casing, and then you'd run out of meat, and you have to fill the, fill the, the gun. Size, size of the size of a caulking gun is what it was, too, yeah. so it was uh, definitely uh, not very much volume, and then you're trying to get the meat in without having any air in all this little caulking gun tube sort of thing, and it was terrible. And you want the nice long rope of it, and... Almost there. Good, 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 good. And we're there. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's get this out of the way. Jamie's got her strings all pre-cut. I'm not gonna have another fiasco. If you watched our last video, we were trying the fancy twist it one way, twist it the other way. And I was having troubles. They were all, or do we want to do the rest of this? No, no, no. Right okay. We so we decided butcher twine is the way to go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll just tie off at the end of this one because that's the start. Oops. We've kind of pre-measured on our board for, we're not quite sure, but we're going to go with seven inches. Does that look blurry? All of a sudden now it looks bigger than looks when we... bigger? Yeah. See, this is the problem. <laughs> okay, we'll go with the six inch mark then. It's the uh, the debate of, you know, should the hot dogs stick out, out the end of the hot dog bun or not? Which would also lead into the debate I heard on the radio the other day on, uh, and leave your answers below, are hot dogs a sandwich? I don't think they are. I think they're their own hot thing. Hot dogs but are their own thing. That's what I would think. But apparently this is a or matter of... was I supposed to argue here? Nope, nope. This was a matter of debate on the radio there when we were going to the city the other day. I think it has all the aspects of it, but being... Like, yeah, it's meat on a bread, but it's not the same. You tied, cut a little too short. Yeah, I did on that last one. So we will uh, get these all linked up here, and then we're going to sous vide them in a or, uh, seal them in a, in a package, and then we'll get a sous vide going at 135 degrees, and we'll cook for about two hours. The nice thing with doing the sous vide is it's controlled, of course, rather than doing them on a grill or on a smoker or anything. The, these casings do not accept smoke at all. Sorry, I messed that one up. And uh, so there's the only point of smoking them is maybe just a little color on the skin, which you don't get to taste because these skins are coming off, so it's kind of pointless. 
there's different there's different casings you could use that uh, natural casings of course would be better and then you would leave them on but these are the hot dogs of my youth so anyways we will sous vide them and they say and the nice part of that is is that there's no moisture loss whatsoever because they're sealed and controlled temperature these should be pretty perfect it should it's all be. Sudden done. I'm excited. Yeah. We've always we've done a lot of different pepperonis and stuff, but this is our first time doing a hot dog. A hot dog. So. Yeah. Everybody says they're a labor of pure love because they're not worth it. <laughs> but so far, I would almost argue with them here. Well, I would say that if anybody's been to a grocery store lately, the it's not exactly the cheap food of our youth either. So, no. and if you're hunters like we are, and you've got a deer... Well, even, if, even if you're not, this yeah. this is a venison pork hot dog. But uh, if, if you had just straight pork or even straight beef, and I mean, there's no shortage of, of uh, recipes. There's actually a guy that I watched that he made... Uh, now, it's not something we get here, but they're in the States, the Hebrew National yeah. All Beef Hot Dogs. Uh, which we should have been supporting with all that's going on in the world. But uh, decent looking recipe and... Do you know his channel? Because... No, I don't. You know what? If we can find the video, I will link him below and... I think uh, he gets enough views without me. <laughs> but you no, know what? No, actually I watch him a lot. He's really good. It uh, doesn't hurt. I always say... I two guys in a cooler or something like that, it's called. Share the love. It never hurts yeah, to... They're, they're to a fantastic channel. He's he's always got interesting recipes. Um, yeah, so much. And, and not just normal. I mean, yeah, he, he's got the hot dog recipe, but I uh, uh, watched him do barbacoa sausages the other oh, day. Those and I totally am going to do that. Once we find some beef jerks. Yeah, us. there's different uh, differences in what we can get here in Canada for... Well, at the store. At he, the store. He even said he had trouble finding... You need to go to a real butcher, not just a, not just a store. But. Too short again? Too short again. Oh no, I made it work. I but, can. But he can actually uh, link them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, and when we practice more, like with building the new house, and uh, I was working full time last year, so I, I didn't even get out hunting last year. So we're just kind of getting back into the groove. So I'm sure if we, practice makes perfect with everything. Actually, all of this uh, mixes and stuff that we got this time, and usually we support our local our local uh, hunting store. Sometimes we go to Cabela's, but this uh, was actually out of a place in Edmonton called High High Caliber High Caliber Products. Fantastic people in there. Oh, the people that work there are so friendly and knowledgeable and. I just, I could, I've only been in there the once, but the lady we dealt with, man, she knew where every item was in that store and what to recommend and couldn't say enough good about it. Nope. No, nope. that's my second time through there and will return. No shortage of stuff either and everything oh, in stock. Yeah. And from, from beginners to the... Professionals. Pro very professional. No, I mean professional cooks or... Yes, yeah. yeah, that's what I mean too. Oh, like as yeah. far as the uh, those vacuum sealer drawer things and like everything. Yeah. That one looks. That one looks funny. Yeah, way too fat on one end. We're getting towards the end, maybe. Or? Yeah, we are. This will be just about the last. Sausage here. Do you split it in half or have one no, extra long no, one? No, this will be the other one. Let's 
screws are down into the right size, we'll be right on the end. Almost like we knew what we were doing. Just about. But everybody knows better than that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well that's it for right now. Mm -hmm. We'll get the sous vide machine out, package this, and... Hi, so we are back, and it is the next day. It's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Not often you get to say that. It's no. tomorrow. So we had gone through how we mixed the meat, how we stuffed the casing, and we had put them in our food saver bags, mm -hmm. and they've been in the fridge all night. Kind of letting that cure. Yeah, we're about 16 hours right now. Cure work through the meat. And this is actually my canning pot, but it, it it's second. It's a lot more meat than normal for uh, for what we usually do. So. Yeah, usually we're only sous vide, you know, a little roast for mm -hmm. the family or something. So we needed something bigger. So my canning pot, this is the sous vide. If you're not familiar with sous vide, what's the best definition? Boiling water in a bag. Boiling the water in a bag? Well, whatever. <laughs> so no, it's, it's, it's just a set of a, a constant temperature to cook any meat. Um, and there's, I, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but even if you were cooking a steak, you would vacuum, you know, put whatever with it in the bag. It sits in there for, usually it makes bad meat better, we've, uh, more we've, tender. We've done it a lot and we always enjoy, like yep. we've done pork chops, roast steak. Yep. A yeah, lot of stuff. We've done a lot of even bad, like really bad cuts of meat, like of, of beef, like tough cuts. We'll turn out a little out. bit of oil, salt, and pepper in there for 24 hours, and works great. But it's it's the constant temperature, and it's also these hot dogs being sealed, so we're not steaming off uh, any, you know, by having them in this in a smoker or anything else. They're we don't want to dry them out. They're going to be great. And. Be great. Of course, you vacuum seal because you don't want to be adding, you don't want to just boil it, but you want it cooked. So it's the constant so it's just temperature. An, an immersion, it's an immersion cooker, so it's immersed in the heat. Yeah. Yeah. So, and also, as we mentioned earlier, because these are the type of casings, the reason you don't put them right into a smoker is because the smoke wouldn't permeate the casing. Right. So that's what this step is. So what's the temperature and everything that we well, do here? Uh, I've got it all set up for 135. We're gonna do it at 135 for two, two to three hours. Probably two hours is enough. Yeah. Uh, it really doesn't matter in a lot of cases, whether it's one hour, two hours, five hours, as long as the meat is entirely 135 in and out, all the way through. Yeah. Uh, it won't cook anymore. And that's even an odd thing with the, if you set this up for rare cooking of a steak, when you pull it out, if you were to cut that steak open, it's rare, even if it's two days later, because it won't go beyond that point of, of cook. There are some odd videos I know. It's like, can we eat this after five days in the... Yeah. There's an extent. <laughs> Probably is, maybe not. Yeah. So anyway, we will put these into our sous vide and be back in one to two hours. Yeah, two. Two, two hours. Two Let's hours. say two hours. We will be back. Okay. Okay, yeah, it's simple. This is a bag of meat It goes in, and that's as much skill as you need for this. And every it sous vide really will is. be different. I'm using the Insta Pot, Instant Pot sous vide, um, more because I'm just addicted to Instant Pot everything. The only other thing is there is a max line, and now I've gone past it, so I'm just going to take out a coffee cup full or two of water just to get it to the, the maximum line. On this. And a side note, if you are using a sous vide to do a, a roast or anything like that, make sure that it doesn't go below the minimum line. We've had that issue with some tougher cuts that have had to sous vide for yeah, a long time. You want to make sure that it stays above that minimum line. Steams off that water. There we are. We're perfect. So we're good to go and we'll be back in a couple hours. So we're back. These have been now in the sous vide for... Just over two hours. Just over two hours. And... Now I guess it comes the time where we get to take them from here and get them into an ice bath to cool them down. Yeah, and just disclaimer, it's just we've got well water, so our well water is like five degrees Celsius, which is fairly icy. That should get the stop the cooking process and get them ready to open up and take a look at. Okay, so go out, or am I doing this? You can take one and just take one and throw it in the ice, and then we'll uh, just 
Oh, of course I grabbed the small one. Now it's funny, I ran out of food saver bags. So that's why there's so many bags of little ones. So do one or do them all? Oh, do them all then. Okay. Grab the goofy one, you might as well grab them all then. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we looked at some recipes online and uh, it all depends, right? Some of them were at as low as 130, some went up to 160. Yeah, even 180. 180 for yeah. the sous vide. So it's kind of your comfort level for us. Like, obviously, we're going to, we're not eating these raw. So. You definitely could, though, now. Yeah. And we, and we brought our temperature up to 150. Just, I know we said 135 before, but just taking consider, a little extra consideration because of the pork. Yeah. It was all. Okay. Let's hit play button there. Get that stopped. These will cool very quickly. Yep. One of the advantages to having a well is the abundance of cold water. <laughs> yeah, this will just take five minutes or so and we we'll, should be ready to pop a package open and take a look. We let those cool down for a few minutes. A few minutes. So we'll open one up here and uh, we've got a fry pan going. Nope, not going. Not going. Got a fry pan now going, so we'll just give it a quick fry and Bart will show, show you his sausage. <laughs> yeah, those are still just a tiny bit warm. We'll leave the other ones to to uh, keep cool on. But being we're going to cook these, this is perfectly great. So they should just, if as per advertised, Oh, I gotta do the swirl, right? Oh, of course, just like when we were kids, the swirl. Ooh, those look nice. Beautiful, nice and red. Hold it up there and then I can zoom in on it so they can. Yeah. Mm, it smells nice, it smells just like those wieners, like the wieners buy from the store. I don't even know how to describe. Yeah, I don't either. It's <laughs> Smells like a wiener. You know, there's lots of times where it's like, oh, you can smell the garlic yes, or I whatever. I can't get over how easy these peel. But I know they're just a plastic casing, but you would have thought they'd yeah. stick or... Well, I would have thought that it would have been more... Um, like, I know we whipped it good, but you know, you almost half still expect to see the more... Like the grain. Grain, yeah, yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Well, these look... They smell mm, delicious. And really like do. I said, I can't put my finger on... It's not garlic, it's... Hot dog smell. Hot dog smell. But good hot dog smell, not those... The slimy... I'm not a big hot dog person, but uh, so we'll give that a fry and uh, yeah, go from there. from there. I gotta pull up my pants every time you start. <laughs> There's lots Just of people. Ready. There's lots of people that when they, they take a break and then when they come back, they've always got a. I'm not talking to you, Peter Mon. Just say it. No. So anyway, the pan is hot. Bart will fry up one of these and uh, we'll give Should it. Should really take a minute or two. Yeah. Oh, the sizzle. I'm gonna turn the light on, just maybe not the fan. That'll make the smoke go away. No, <laughs> oh, look pretty. <sighs> and again, I go back to the same thing that I said in the video where we were actually grinding and mixing the meat. You can't go wrong with cast iron. I will preach that forever, so. So, the, so it's had its little time in the fry pan. Mm -hmm. You take the honors, you're the... Oh. Yeah, it looks beautiful. It smells good. Oh my. <laughs> Mmm, hot, but mmm, mm-hmm. You see ketchup, I like the spicy mustard. Mmm. I would eat that with nothing, and I'm a very, I love my condiments, and. I'll tell you what, it tastes like about 1984. It tastes better than 1984. No, it tastes it's, really good, but I mean, it's that similar. Yeah, it's that similar. Like it's not so P 
pureed that it's just that mm -hmm. hot dog. There is dog. a little bit of meal to it. There is, like as far as mouth feel, it's nice. Yeah, I think this is going to be a definite uh, make again, which is good. I tell you what too, I would love to try this just as far as a control with just pork. Yeah, yeah. Or, or just beef. No, that'd be fair. Like we have a lot of deer to use up and lots of times we end up just doing a ton of jerky or something but that is uh mm -hmm. that's delicious but yeah i don't know if i yeah no that tastes like summertime like hold it up the influencer pose where's the best no it's uh that is that's fabulous Mm. That's all there is to do. I mean, uh, I'm not even going to pull these out and skin them. We'll just leave them packed in their packages of eight. Yep. And uh, I think we'll just go from there and then... Question that I don't know if he knows the answer to, so I'm kind of putting him on the spot. And if he doesn't know the answer, it'll be down in the comments. I'll pin it. How long will these stay good for? No, I don't know. Okay. They should be good for a long time. I mean, number one between being vacuum sealed and then full of cure and they're fully cooked. Yeah. Uh, freezer burn will be the only, that should be your first thing. And I mean, even there shouldn't be very much air gap in there. Yeah. So, so I guess, yeah, I will pin that in the comments. So I don't we think do you're going to last long. Anyway. I don't, yeah. Cause I'm already foreseeing that. Okay. So eight will be gone at supper tonight. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have none for if anybody comes over for a fire or anything. But that was about five pounds. Yeah. So that's, that's a pretty good, I guess we saw them before we put them in the sous vide, but the redness is just beautiful here. Yeah. No, I don't think these will last long, so I don't think we are going to have to worry at all about how long they'll last, but I will, I'll, we'll find some <clears throat> out and I can put that in the pinned comments. Final thoughts or? No, not yet. I mean, until we get kid approval. Yeah. Uh, I don't know whether there'll be anything to change. They tried. The beautiful color. I mean, they're very, yeah. They tried some of the, uh, just the. Well, we tried out of the fry pan. Just out of the fry pan last night and they both loved it. Um, I think final takeaway is for us. It's a lot of work for. It is a lot of work three, for. Three packs of wieners, but. But we like doing stuff yeah, like this. this so is, that's, that's what makes it awesome. Um, the sausage stuffer was a lifesaver. Yeah. Like that's really way amazing. Um, these casings were so far. So, yeah. So far yeah. so good. We didn't have any explode while we were stuffing either, which is a, nope. a potential sometimes we will have to, we'll learn the, the twisty technique versus the tie. But technique. Yeah. I don't even know about that. I mean, the, the tie was not a big, big deal. And I mean, it's butcher's twine for a reason. It's not like we used uh, bale twine. No, so. which we could have. We could. <laughs> Some chicken wire or something. <laughs> um, no, so I think that's it. Uh, anything, any questions, by all means, put it down in the comments. Either I or Bart will, will get an answer for you and stay tuned, I guess. I think, I think the big one, you know, we don't know what we're doing. No. And we can do this. What's that old saying? If I can do this, everybody can do it, which makes me the, the biggest dummy in the patch. But but uh yeah just don't be scared to try this stuff yeah this is, this is we all start great. out somewhere and it tastes so much better being you did it and that's anything whether it's homemade hot dogs or sausage or farm fresh eggs which i say you can taste the happy in it comes down to you did it yourself you grew it or harvested it yourself and mm -hmm. we'll go from there so i hope you enjoyed if you did make sure you thumbs up like, subscribe, share if you feel so inclined, and until next time, see you!